Hey, welcome back to the place where energy matters. And in this video, I'm gonna take an initial look at the Renergy 200 watt solar panel. So I've been really pleased with their 100 watt folding solar panel. And I did a video where I compared it against Jackery's 100 watt panel. And that's in the top corner right now if you fancy taking a look. So I wanted to try one of their larger offerings as in the 200 watt version. So as you can see on screen at the moment, the packaging was pretty good. There's protection for the frame and also for the glass front. And apart from a dent, or what I call a delivery dent to the box itself, it arrived in perfect condition. Anyway, enough chat, let's take a closer look at the panel itself. Right, let's start off with the front and just check out the build quality. So if we start down here with the first corner, as you see, they've got these little plastic corners on there. But in general terms, I've had a look round already and it all looks pretty good. It's all nicely lined up. I've seen no problems whatsoever on the front. Nice to see some nice clear glass as well. So no weathering or scratching on there at all, obviously, because it's brand new. It's always a nice feeling when you get a brand new panel. So let's flip it over and just check out the back. Right, time to check out the back now. So let's start off again with the frame. And as you can see, it's nice and tight. The joints are tight. You've got the little plastic edge there, I'm assuming that's to protect. You've got all the mounting holes there as well as the earthing point. And again, nice and tight. The frame looks very well put together, actually, I must say. And again, that's the other corner there. Connection box again looks like pretty good quality one as well. And that leads off to MC4 connectors. That's one and two. Again, they look of good quality. And there's the specification label there. So I'm just going to open this up and we'll see what it's like inside that. Right, so the back plate is off as you can see and it's nice and neat and tidy inside. So the cables have actually been crimped on and not soldered, which is good. The soldering that has been done is not excessive, so there's not excessive runoff there. The sealant that's been used as well looks pretty good. There's not an excessive amount on there. Again, it's nice and neat. And there's the back plate, which has a little rubber seal on to keep it weatherproof. So all in all, pretty good. Right, time to hook it up and see how it got on on a couple of units. So please bear in mind, this is early Feb in the UK and conditions weren't ideal when I did this. Right, ready to go now. I've got it uh, propped up on here because of shading from the trees over the other side. But I've connected up the MC4 connectors here just to the eight millimeter output, as you can see there. So let's hook it up for the first time and see how we get on. We're not the sunniest day today, so let's see what it gives us. So it might hit the 120 mark, if we're lucky. The sun's come back out, and as you can see, it's in the mid-120s. So, a good first test. Right, Jackery's done, so uh, let's now hook up to the uh, EB150 and see what we get on there. Bear in mind it's the start of Feb, and it's not that sunny today. I'm hoping you can see that we're getting up to about 180 watts. Wow, that's brilliant. So as covered in previous videos on the Jackery Explorer 1000, results seem for this are typical. So even though it's a 200 watt panel, the mid 120s is about where you get due to the input specifications on the ports. Now the uh, same results would have been seen while using the Anderson port, although I used the eight millimeter input. If you fancy finding out what I'm going to try next in order to squeeze more out of this 200 watt panel to charge the Explorer 1000 faster, check out the suggested video. Right, time for a quick look at the specifications now. And this is a label that's on the back of the panel itself. So I always draw people's attention to the open circuit voltage. In this case, it's 23 volts. And it's always important to make sure that that voltage is within the voltage range of your input. So for example, the Jacker Explorer 1000 goes up to a voltage input of 30 volts. So hooking this panel up to that is ideal, but always check that first. So something else just to note as well is the size of the panel. So I've just highlighted that as well on screen. So I'm just gonna show you what it's like in the garden compared to one of my other standard 100 watt panels, just to give you an idea. And obviously it's longer as you can see. So if you wanted to mount this uh, portrait or landscape, then you'd probably need to consider that for wherever you wanted to use it. So there you have it. I'm gonna to continue to test this on my other units as well and see what I can get out of it as the weather improves. Hopefully the sun comes back at some point. I'm also gonna combine it with the DC booster circuit, which I've referenced earlier in this video. So again, if you wanna check out that video, have a look at that. And then we see what we can actually get out of this 200 watt panel and how it fares in better weather. 
If you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, please pop them in the section below and I'll respond as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to DadVinci.